And if you look over here, you see, you could fit like four, five bodies in here. Hello everybody, welcome to Coldwater, Michigan. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and here at Bish's RV today we've got an update on the little 184 uh, Catalina Sumite Adidion, which is the uh, little brother to the Catalina Legisi Adidion, if you've watched these videos regularly. So this is a, uh, a floor plan that a lot of builders are making now, and it requires a very special quality that this RV has. It's a narrow body, but it's not too narrow. It's a seven and a half foot body as opposed to a seven or an eight. It's kind of like, well, it's like a tweener. But the thing is what they've done differently on this one is they have built it by default with a camp queen, but with the ability to very easily put a true queen in this, albeit a bendy bed, again, being fair, and share, uh, sharing you the good with the bad along the way. Sharing you? What is wrong with me? Sharing the good with the bad along the way. That's what I'm gonna do for you. But um, they've also built this one with max exterior cargo capacity, because it's not a very big camper. You don't wanna be inside more than you necessarily have to be. It's big enough just to sleep and, and maybe feed a couple people. I Ideally, you want to spend all the time you can outside. So you can get this thing like you're seeing here with a big full front passer with a monstrously sized giant cargo space under the rear bunks instead of a camp kitchen. Although I do believe you could actually uh, option a camp kitchen into this. But the number one request I hear in camp kitchens, can I get it built without one? Yeah, you can. That's what they do right here in uh, Catalina every single day. I almost said Catalina because I say it wrong so often. Now I've got myself screwed up. But, um, a lot of these little single axle campers, I've seen some with less than 600 pounds of, car pounds of cargo capacity. I can't talk. This has over 1,500 pounds of cargo capacity. That's more than some super slide travel trailers that I see nowadays. And I'm not saying 1,500 pounds is amazing, but it's better than most. And on a little camper like this, I do think it's pretty legitimate. Let me know what you like, let me know what you dislike, and hit that subscribe button if you appreciate the fair way that we uh, go about showing you these things. So starting from the point of view of the sofa, if you were sitting on the uh, the little Murphy sofa up front, this is kind of what it would look like. Gives you a nice spot to really kind of keep an eye on the whole digs for the day. And if you do choose to add a television, it's, I, I mean, really at the best spot, it could be straight over here. The thing is, you're not going to be able to put any kind of massive jumbotron on there because one, that's a small wall and two, this is something you got to watch out for. Make sure it doesn't stick out so far that it's not like blocking that slide fascia, you know? So when you close, like you hang up a TV, and you're like, sweet, I nailed it. And then you close the slide and you're like, wow, I just broke everything. That's, that's the kind of skill I have that I would like you to not have to deal with. Now, you may have noticed in our early floor plan in a flash footage, it has a six and a half foot interior. So uh, a normal interior height, albeit not extra large. I can walk under that air conditioner and not hit my head. Notice that it's a step up slide above the wheel well, but it is carpetless. And they doubled down on the giant pillows in this one. You have not one, not two, not three, but four giant pillows in this camper. You see one on either side of the Murphy bed sofa combo up front. It's like Oprah Winfrey got in here. She's like, you get a pillow and you get a pillow. Like everybody got pillows in this thing. So um, the thing is like, there's a couple brands like uh, the Salem Wildwood 178 BHSK. I don't know if you even have an idea what that alphabet suit means. That would be the most similar model to this. Frankly, this is pretty much based off that. They're the original. They all come up with it a little different way, though. And what they did here is they put an actual like jackknife sofa instead of just like a pontoon bench down here to make it a little more comfortable seating. And while I'm talking, let's go ahead and take a look at that in all its various forms. Look at the flip down armrest in the storage below it. But the thing is, this has that drop down bed. If you notice, you see the way that that's shifting. This ships from the factory with a Camp Queen bed. Uh, the thing is, because it can shift from side to side, you have room to put a 60 by 80 mattress in this thing. Now, it is a folding bendy bed style Murphy bed. So you're going to have to kind of contend with that. And when the sofa is jackknifed down, it does block the slide fascia from allowing the bed to function in transit. So we'll get to see that in a little bit. I'll actually close everything up in road mode and uh, give you a look at this thing, you know, in, in travel access mode in just a few minutes here. But th those are some things, you know, to kind of keep in mind. You can get a bigger bed, but you might have to go to like a foam factory to get like a, a funky foam one or just at least get a foam topper for this or something like that. Now, everybody and their brother 
seems to be going to that little command panel up there that if you, I like that it just has buttons for the slides and the awnings and your monitors and all that. But if you uh, really want to, you can also Bluetooth to that and get the One Control app on your phone and be able to operate all that or monitor that stuff uh, remotely. Now, looking up top here, the cabinetry is limited. That is actually the, the funny thing about this floor plan. This layout, no matter who builds it, gives you awesome outside capacity, but there's because there's just not a lot of room for like hanging storage and whatnot in this one. It is very limited in that regard. So, you know, clothing space and stuff inside, you're going to be probably living out of duffel bags. That's just how it goes. It's cool that you have storage below that dinette. That's an all nice, uh, like, plywood decking under that as well, which is surprising. So if you actually do need to sleep on that big true U dinette that's like almost seven foot long, uh, like, you can actually wrap the whole family around that. You can sleep a big person on that. That's kind of the cool thing about this camper, though. This is the smallest camper that can sleep the largest number of people. That's really this one's claim to fame. Um, now, you might have noticed there's some USB plugs around, but if you're paying attention, they're starting to include some USB type C plugs in RVs, which I think is very interesting. Um, I think eventually more and more things will go that way. Um, I know that uh, I'm starting to see type C plugs in vehicles and at airports and all, all over the place nowadays, basically. You may have noticed too, sealed edge thermofoil counters all the way through. That's a big 12 volt DC compressor fridge, but they do a neat little thing here. It's a little touches that I like. Um, the Just the hard shutoff switch for the 12 volt fridge. Like inside the fridge, there's a little panel that you can push a button to turn it off. But it's like when you close the door, you never, I mean, is the refrigerator running? It's like Schrodinger's refrigerator in there. By the way, anytime you open the fridge, make sure you knock first in case there's a salad dressing in there. Moving on, 300 pound rated double over double bunks. Although it does look like the mattresses are like one or two inches too big. Over here in the lower bunk, household and the double USB plugs. Upper bunk is USB only, but I think that's probably the most important thing that, you know, if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you'll need. And both the upper and lower bunks have full viewing and breeze windows, which I think is a really nice touch. And in this Joe Friday camper, we have a Joe Friday bathroom. It's just the facts, ma'am. It's, you know, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There's, there's nothing but just basic, straightforward function. It is nice, though, that it's big enough that you do have a dedicated sink in the bathroom. Now, the, uh, the hip and shoulder space around that toilet is great. If you're long-legged like me, though, that little box that kind of hides some plumbing, that kind of feels like it's in your way. It's a little bit of a shub. A shower tub kind of hybrid combo. If you got to bathe a baby, you could. Not really made for big soaking adults, but I don't know that this has the holding tank capacities for stuff like that. The one thing I will tell you on this one, it does not have a skylight above the shower. And with this being six and a half foot tall, and with me being over six foot tall, and you having to step up into the shower when you get in there, it looks like Indiana Jones getting crushed in the Temple of Doom when I stand in that thing. And as promised, closing up the slide for road mode. Real quick pro tip, don't travel with your table in the up position because going down the road, this table can jiggle bang and get loose and then whack, start cracking into things, which is why I call it jiggle and then bang. That's a, uh, it's a nonomatopoeia. It's the, uh, you know, when the word uh, represents the sound that it makes, like buzz or something like that. Anyway, you get the idea. So this is what I was talking about, how you, you lose the front bed in transit because that sofa is just... It, just a little bit too big to uh, fully come down when the slide is closed. So keep that in mind. But beyond that, you need to get to the fridge, the bunks, the bathroom. If you got to make a little travel stop for something like that, well, she's Cracker Barrel compliant. All right. So first and foremost, let's talk towing. What's it going to take to get this sucker down the road and do so safely? Well, uh, the fact that it tops out at 5,500 pounds says you want a minimum of 5,500 pound tow rating. And frankly, if you have only a 5,500 pound tow rating, I think this is still going to be a little bit too much camper. Because, yeah, it's technically within the safe realm of things, but you're working your vehicle to the absolute max and burning that candle at both ends. I would say if you've got a good 65 or up, maybe like a 6,200 pound tow package SUV and up, you should be pretty good here. Little graphical update on these looking pretty good. The uh, the eight foot wide brother to this series, the Tandem Axle is making a comeback for the 23 season. So what you're looking at here, you'll get to see 
kind of just bigger versions of it. As I mentioned before, she is a seven and a half foot wide body. Um, still technically narrow body, a little bit bigger than some, but this that body size is kind of magic because it's what allows them to put a bathroom next to a set of double double bunks like that. The uh, If it were me, I think I'd throw a power tongue jack on this and I'd probably call it good. That's just about all this one really needs for me. But uh, a couple surprises on this one for sure is just the, the, the massive outside storage capacity you have on these. Case in point, um, starting up front here, a lot of these little campers do not have a full pass-through like this. Now that does run under that little folding Murphy sofa, so it's not as big and tall as some uh, of these compartments could be. But speaking of big and tall, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to one of our finance officers here at our Coldwater Michigan store, Mr. Tyler uh, Shaver. His last name Shaver, we call him the Razor's Edge because that's how thin he keeps his margins. But look at this. Tyler, how big are you? 6'3", 280. He's 6'3", tall, 280 pounds. And I mean, <laughs> look at how big this compartment is even compared to having a big dude in there. So get Mr. Tyler out of there. Uh, again, give me a, I just thought, you know, I can open this up and I can tell you, wow, it's a big space. Or I could actually do something to show you how big that is. Now, I do believe they have an optional camp kitchen, but what's kind of cool, if you just want to bring along your own grill or griddle or something like that, there's still a propane cooker hooker over here. You got the little place to tie down the dogs, keep them under the awning so they're not getting heat stroke all day and they're not going uh, running off. What was that, Funny Farm? Was that that Chevy Chase movie where they get a dog and he opens the door and the dog just tears off and he attacks some ducks and then he starts running and you like, you see him again 30 minutes later in the movie still running, he just never stops. Anyway, yeah, you can tie the dog down so it won't be like Chevy Chase and Funny Farm. <laughs> Now, I like to show you the good with the bad, uh, and I don't like to end things on a note like this, but uh, it's just something I notice in trying to be fair. Sure is nice that we have rear stabilizer jacks. Sure would be nice if they off, uh, also gave those to us up front so it would stop the wiggle jiggling. Now, lacking front stabilizer jacks like that, that's a weirdly common, um, annoying thing in the single axle travel trailer market, especially since single axles are pretty much the hardest to stabilize. The good news, it's not real hard to just get a couple extra jacks. They just screw right onto the frame and there you go. If that's the only thing you need to take this RV home and feel good about it, call our team, that's screwdriver work. We'll make that stuff happen. Now, obviously, this is a very simple, I, I call it Joe Friday camper, just the facts, ma'am. Like, there is nothing over the top flashy or fancy about this, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, also going to save you a lot of money on the price tag. But, they're not the only one that builds a floor plan like this. Wildwood, Ember, um, uh, well, well, Salem also because of Wildwood, but other people build a layout like this. I will leave you links in the video description to, uh, to watch videos on comparable units if you'd like to see one of those. Um, also, uh, I'll leave you a link down there to check the pricing and availability on this one. Wherever we have Catalina's parked, if we have one in stock, it'll have a price tag for you right on our website you can check out. And if you don't see anything when you click on that, it might mean that we're sold out. Apologies, our team can help you if you give them a call. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and thanks for hanging out again, everyone.